Mr. Humphreys, are you free? I'm free. Forward, please. Mind the door. What? Are you being served, sir? I'm Humphreys, and I'm free. Are you being served, sir? What would you like to see? If you'd like some swimming trunks, we've got them plain or spotty. We've also got some see-through that really tan your... Beach wear. Oh, these are gay. There's plenty around the back. And if you'd like a bit of flash, then try a plastic mag. Whoops! Are you being so-so? I'm Humphreys and I'm free. Are you being so-so? What would you like to see? Struth! Half an hour early? What's wrong? You've all got insomnia. Next Monday is the annual autumn sale. Today is Saturday, when we, the humble staff of Bone Brothers, are allowed to have first go at whatever takes our fancy. Oh. <laughs> In that case, I'll have first cut Miss Nichols. <laughs> Cancer that order, you look terrible. I was awake all night worrying I wouldn't wake up. Well, I'd want to buy this rubbish anyhow, even at a discount. Well, normally no one. But there does happen to be an item that Mrs. Wagstaff wants me to buy for her. Oh, Oi. hold on a minute. I'm the one that reduced that to that, and apart from which it's in my department, and this is the only chance I'll get of buying a fur coat paying that price for one. Well, you could always uh, pay another price and get one. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> Mind you, looking like that, you'd be lucky to get a pair of earmuffs. Well, if you want it, it's over my dead body. And I can't help what I look like. I had to leave in a hurry this morning. Doesn't even have time to groom my pussy. <laughs> Mrs. Crawford, please. I've been married 50 years and Mrs. Mankiewicz has never had a fur coat. This is my last chance to get one at such a price. I'm appealing to you as an old man. You'd never appeal to me as a young man. <laughs> well, if not for me, then for Mrs. Mankiewicz. She is, after all, in the twilight of her life. Well, if that's the case, who's going to see it? <laughs> of course, nobody's asked me. But as a member of the staff, I am just as entitled to buy it as usual. If you could afford it. Afford it? Listen, on my overtime, I can afford two. But, quite rightly, my wife thinks they're dead common. Mind you, it'll look all right on you, Mrs Crawford. <laughs> oh, ignore him. Now it would seem that we all want the same thing. Well, perhaps we should toss for it. Certainly not. For all we know, you've got a double-headed coin. And apart from which, Mr Humphreys isn't here yet, and as much as I'd like that coat for one of my girlfriends, I think we should give him a chance. Well, of course he's not here. He hasn't got a wife or a girlfriend, so he's out of it. <laughs> Morning, all. Morning. Uh, Humphreys. Do I take it that you spent the night behind the counter? Yes, I didn't want to be late for the sale. <laughs> Come to think of it, I didn't want to wake up at all. I was having such a lovely dream. No, what was it? I dreamt that Australia were playing England at rugby and I was about to hurl myself into the scrum. <laughs> <laughs> Mr Humphreys, do you mean to tell me that you dreamt that you were actually playing rugby for England? No, I was in the stand, but I got carried away. <laughs> <laughs> I do, you know. Uh, have you come about that coat? Well, as a matter of fact, I have. Well, it's not your colour. It's for my mother. Well, she's got a five to one chance because we all want it. Yes. As Mrs Crawford won't agree to toss a coin, what are we going to do? Look, I've got an idea. Why don't we all blindfold ourselves and the first one to get hold of it is the lucky one? <laughs> I'm not walking about here blindfolded with a lot of hands waiting to get lucky. It's <laughs> <laughs> for me too. Yeah, that could be your last chance. Ignore him. I am. It's not easy, but I am. I've got an idea. Why don't we treat it like the Olympic Games? We'll all go downstairs in the lift. We'll line up at the bottom of the stairs, and on the word go, we race up here, and the first one to grab the ticket gets it. Oh, well, I'll go for that. Uh, but the lady should have a start. Yes, the men should be handicapped. Oh, I'm already handicapped. I still have a slightly stiff leg as the result of a war wound. A German bullet? <laughs> now, if I remember the story rightly, he sat on a rusty fork in the cookhouse. <laughs> Well, if he's got a bad leg, he'd better start just behind Miss Nichols. Well, I've got an handicap. My age. Well, you can start in front of the men. Mr Humphreys, do you have a handicap? Not that it would make any difference. <laughs> but I do think I ought to start in front of Mr Randall. I'll agree with that. <laughs> right. There is Mrs Crawford first on the stairs. 
Then Miss Nichols, followed by Mr. Bankovitz, me, Mr. Humphreys, and outside in the street, Mr. Randall. Right, come on. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Mr. Brown. Which one was it, dear? That fur coat there, sir. Put it on my account, Wangster. But it's in the sale, sir. Oh, that's even better. Oh, sir, I'll never forget how happy you've made me. I expect I will. <laughs> there we are, everyone. <laughs> Tea. Does it taste a bit of coconut? Oh, now you mention it, it does. It's tea. <laughs> when I rang Mrs. Mankovitz about the fur coat, she was in tears. I'll have to take her out to a nice lunch now. You yeah, bring her here, she'll be in tears again. <laughs> it's disgusting the way they feed us. And the way they pay us. Oh, it's time Mr. Bone retired. I think he's past it. Spending the profits on a fur coat for a young chit of a girl is disgusting. I'd like to know what she had to do to get it. Oh, well, when you're that age, all you've got to do is smile and you get anything you want. <laughs> what are you smiling at me like that for, Mr. Rand? I want the sugar. <laughs> the sooner Bone goes, the better. He's got us all at it. I'm sorry to trouble you in your break, but young Mr. Bone has asked me for a progress report on Mr. Humphreys. I um, have the form here. If you'll answer the question and award marks, I'll sign it. It's like being at school. Mr. Bone does have some rather old-fashioned ideas, but he is at the helm and we are just the crew. What's up? I'm hanging on. Any minute now, we're going to run aground. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like that back in 15 minutes. But this is our break, sir. Captain Wangstaff, I'm still considering that raise you asked me for. Would 10 minutes be all right, sir? <laughs> <laughs> Now, progress report on Wilberforce Clayburn Humphreys, age... You man, keeping your voice down, please. That's private and confidential. I don't want everybody to know that I'm accelerating down the road of life towards 40. Well, according to this, you should be able to see it clearly in your rear view mirror. <laughs> now, marks out of ten for punctuality. Well, he's never been late. Oh, except on his first day. Oh, nine for punctuality. General manner? Well, I would say uh, genial. Oh, and he's got a nice smile. Mm, he's got away with women. And men. <laughs> I shall put good mixer. <laughs> Customer handling. Uh, Mr. Bank, you're nearer to him than me. Well, uh, nobody's ever complained. Uh, apart from that Brazilian ballet dancer. That was when I complained. He bought a very tight pair of trousers and I had to give him a lift to see if the seams were strong enough. <laughs> That's the one we had to give the credit note to. That's right. Mr. Humphrey's got two tickets to Swan Lake. <laughs> Customer handling, no complaints. Now, knowledge of stock. Well, he knows what he's got and what he's short of. Sometimes I'm short of what I wish I'd got. <laughs> Conversant with stock. Now, well, how does he react to authority? Well, I'm always there when you call, Captain Wagstaff. I've never been behind the door when I've got to handle a customer. And even when he's busy, he always helps me out with my customers. And whatever task he's given, he does it without complaint. Yeah, now, what, what's the word I'm looking for? Crawler. <laughs> no, it's either ubiquitous or anxious. Uh, but for this report, just excellent will do. Yeah, due to the fact that he can't spell the other two. <laughs> Tidy? Oh, yes. Appearance and clothes, very good. Sharp pencil always in top pocket. <laughs> Never without a pencil. <laughs> now, does staff member take part in any of our social activities? Well, not officially, but I was thinking of joining the whist club to keep fit. Well, how could that keep you fit? Oh, well, they take so long over it. By the time they've finished, the last bus has gone and you've got to run home. <laughs> but surely you could walk. <laughs> the way I walk, sometimes you've got to run. <laughs> Thinking about it. Well, 
I'll just add my general comments and give this to Mr. Finnick. Oh, they want your superannuation number. I've got that somewhere. I've got so many bits of paper. Hang on. Yeah, oh. that's it. There. Oh, what's that photo? Oh, that's a picture of my mother just before I was born. Oh, let's see. She was on the stage. Uh, it's that's Mr. Bowen. Enjoying the canteen fair? Oh, yes, 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 Mr. Oh, here's your photo back, Mr. Humphreys. Oh, am I missing something? Oh, it's just a picture of my mother when she was young and lovely. Oh, she was a chorus girl. Oh, yes, that's her at near the end. Good grief. Was this the Ladybird Troupe? Yes, that's right. At the Old Palace Theatre? Yes. In 1938? I believe that was the day. Was her name Annie? Yes, it was. Did you ever meet your father? <laughs> well, I thought I had. Oh, uh, I've always regretted running away and leaving her in that state. Uh, I was a coward, but I was young and foolish. A bunch of flowers, champagne from her slipper, and it was all happening. What are you talking about? Do you mean... It? Yes. Yes, I'm afraid it's true. Oh. Daddy? We've had it repaired for you, madam, and the factory has put extra strong elastic in the back. But if I was you, I'd only take shallow breaths while you're running it in. There we are. Thank you, madam. Thank you. Fancy Mr. Humphreys being Mr. Bone's son. Shh! It's not so nice being born on the wrong side of the blanket, you know. <laughs> Means he's a bad... Miss Nichols! <laughs> Mr. Humphreys has already told us that his mother was married when he arrived. Mm. I bet she was the only one in the maternity ward wearing a wedding dress. <laughs> he's such a charming man, really. All he needs is a good woman behind him. Mrs. Crawford, you weren't considering that... Well, he and I do get on very well together. <laughs> so you'd better mind your step. You can never tell, I just might happen to be up there in that big chair as well. That wouldn't leave much room for him. <laughs> oh, here he comes. <laughs> I'm sorry I've been off the floor so long. Oh, take all the time in the world. Oh, it's nearly half past two. Perhaps you'd like to go home. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh. I still work here. <laughs> I've just put a call through to my mother. <laughs> Ah, Mr. Dumfries. Yes. Uh, this is Mr. Dumfries, the son of the owner, sir. The gentleman who feels the gloves are a little bit tight, Mr. Yes. Dumfries. Well, don't worry about the fingers, sir. They'll ride up with wear. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, Mr. Humphreys. It is almost impossible to distinguish the real imitation leatherette from the plastic imitation leatherette. <laughs> and you'll find the lining keeps wonderfully warm, won't you, Mr. Dumfries? Oh, warm as toast, Mr. Mankerfield. And that is because the lining is made from real, imitation simulated nylon fur fabric. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. <laughs> As a matter of fact, sir, I wore a pair of these on a skiing holiday and I got a lot of satisfaction from them. <laughs> I believe you did, yes, Mr. Humphreys. You know, one night we had a big freeze up and I couldn't fill my hot water bottle. <laughs> so I wore a pair of these on my feet. I got a lot of satisfaction from them. As a matter of fact, though, for my uh, wife's brother, I don't like him very much. Oh, in that case, sir, you couldn't have made a better choice. <laughs> Cash, Mr. Randall. Whilst you were out, Mr. Dumfries, I sold a three-piece. But I put it down to you, because I knew if you had been here, you'd have got there first. Oh, I couldn't take your commission, Mr. Mac. Oh, please, you're a close friend. Oh, I feel like royalty. <laughs> Lensworth, phone call for Her Majesty. <laughs> hello? Oh, hello, Mother. Yes, it's me. No, I'm fine. I'm still in Australia. <laughs> Listen, I've got a surprise for you. Oh, you've got one too. You're in the club. At your age. Oh, I see. You've joined a bingo club. No, now listen. A ticket has been paid for for you to fly all the way here. 
No, no, it's not cost me anything at all. No, it's been paid for by a very kind old gentleman who you've met before. <laughs> no, love, not that vicar. No, I haven't seen him for <laughs> Well, I can't tell you any more. I shall have to leave you in suspense. <laughs> Bye. Do I understand that we're to have the pleasure of meeting your dear mother? Yes, yeah, she'll be here in 24 hours. He's paying first class. It'll be all first class for you from now on. I have just come from the boardroom. Mr Bone sends his compliments. It appears that a member of the staff informs him you was hoping to buy this in the sale. Had he known the facts at the time, of course, he would have insisted that you have it. Therefore, he has given his secretary next Wednesday off in lieu... And here is the coat, <laughs> with his compliments. But who told him? A certain person whom he has uh, rewarded handsomely. <laughs> you lucky devil! Oh, she'll be very pleased with that. Yes, better make sure it's the right size. <laughs> oh, doesn't fur do something for one? <laughs> Would you like me to wrap it up for her? No, I don't really think it's her. Are you going to put it back in the sale? No, I'm going to lengthen the sleeves and have it myself. Good morning, Wilberforce. Morning, Daddy. Well, <laughs> well, today's the big day. I know. I'm so excited. I haven't seen my mother for about six months. Oh, I haven't seen her for over 40 years. <laughs> I suppose she's changed a bit. She still looks the same to me. Oh, <laughs> she was a firecracker. <laughs> and to think it was you that lit the fuse. <laughs> Bone and son. Oh, yeah. Our chauffeur's just driven up to the front door with me mother. <coughs> Send her straight up. Oh, my leg's gone. <laughs> what? <laughs> she, she's already in the lift. <laughs> my leg's gone as well. Sir? Is this where he works? I beg your pardon, madam. My son, Wilberforce. Yes. You're Mrs Humphreys. Yes. Oh, oh, and you must be the gentleman that looks after the floor. <laughs> oh, he was right. You have a very dominant personality. <laughs> I don't think he's right about the beady eyes, though. <laughs> what a grand sense of humour he has. <laughs> well, gather round, everybody. Gather round. This is Mrs Humphreys. Oh. Uh, Mrs Crawford. <laughs> Oh, and may I say, you look much too young to be his mother. Oh, no, really? Yes, really. I'm nearly 60. Oh, I don't believe it. Oh, it's true. <laughs> oh, well, I'm nearly 45. <laughs> I don't believe it. <laughs> Neither does anybody else, uh, Miss Nichols. It's been a great privilege having your son on the floor. Oh, one doesn't often hear that. <laughs> I'm Mr Mankovitz. Uh, your son's been under me for six Six months, and I'm very satisfied. <laughs> oh, Mr. Randall, your son has been over me for six months, and I'm very satisfied. <laughs> so many people to please. How does he manage it? <laughs> oh, is this where he stands? A, a little more to the right, uh, yes. just about there. Yes. And this is his tape. Oh, I see. Mm. It's still got his aftershave on it. <laughs> I think you're expected up in the boardroom, Mrs Humphreys. Yes, I just wanted to get the atmosphere of his environment. Here <coughs> is the actual piece of chalk he used to have the sleeves shortened of a 38 long fitting. Oh, no. It's all too much. <laughs> if you can stand the strain. The half-eaten pastry he was saving for his coffee break. Oh. Still see the teeth marks in it. That naughty boy still hasn't been to the dentist. <laughs> There's an empty list. Perhaps you'd like to go up now. Oh, thank you. <laughs> They've got a surprise for you. Oh, what is it? Oh, it's a secret. But it's something that happened a long time ago and it's to do with your son. Oh, the police said they were going to drop that case. 
no, 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 it's nothing like that, Mrs. Humphreys. <laughs> well, it's been very nice meeting you all. Oh, the pleasure was all ours. Allow me to escort you to the lift. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Such manners. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, isn't he like us? <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen me, Mother? Oh, you've just missed her. She's just gone up. Oh, well, I shall leave them for a little while. This is going to be a very emotional meeting. Oh, and 40 years is a long time. Apart from which no one's told her a secret's known. I wonder how she'll take it. <laughs> so do I. <laughs> Humphreys. Your son's just gone downstairs. He'll be back in a minute. Come in, come in. Oh, you must be Mr. Bow. And you must be little Annie. <laughs> well, well, oh, do sit down. Oh, thank you. Oh, oh Annie. Will you ever forgive me for what I did? <laughs> What do you mean for what? You know, I've only just arrived. What did you do? <laughs> Left you alone when you needed me. When you both needed me. All those years ago. I've never met you before in my life. <laughs> Remember a youngish man who came to your show? Who drank champagne from your slipper and dined you at Fermano's? No, I remember an oldish man who filled me full of Guinness and took me out for fish and chips. <laughs> well, of course, we've both changed. But look, that was me in those days, just as that was you. That's not me. I never danced with feathers. That's me with the balloons and the big hat. Huh? That's Annie with a spoon. <laughs> the girl that wouldn't say no. <laughs> you should see the rubbish that came to see her. Well, I'm not the father of your son. No, let me put it this way. Were you ever a milk roundsman that got kicked in the head by his horse and had to lie down in someone's car? <laughs> Did you ever land by parachute in a backyard near Manchester one Friday night about seven o'clock? No! <laughs> Were you ever connected with the church, even remotely? No! <laughs> in that case, I can safely say that my son is no relation of yours whatsoever. Thank heaven for that! <laughs> Get me Captain Wagstaff. Men's work. It's for you, Captain Wagstaff. It's his daddy. <laughs> yes, sir. What? Ooh, most unexpected surprise, sir. <laughs> You're relieved? Yes, yeah, so am I. Oh, by the way, sir, that fur coat. Yes, I see. Thank you, sir. What's happened? What's happened? Well, in a nutshell, Mr. Bone isn't Mr. Humphrey's father. <laughs> Thank heaven for that. <laughs> Goodbye, good luck. My poor mother. Oh, it will upset her. I better give her this fur coat after all. And that fur coat, Mr. Humphreys, from this moment is officially back in stock. Well, if that's the case, it's still in the sale and I bag it. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> Plastic bag. I'm hungry, and I'm free. 